Will our children ever be safe? Listen, it is the second day into 2024 and there's already been attempted kidnappings and murders and shootings and everything else already happening just at Walmart stores alone. Who knows what's going on in other stores? Target, Kroger, Albertsons, Piggly Wiggly, who knows? All I know is that yesterday, January 1st, the first day of 2024, when people are still kind of optimistic that maybe this year won't be such a actual like shit show like 2023, people are hoping that people will be nicer, people will be friendlier, people will make less stupid decisions, uh, corporations will give a crap about the little people and instead of profits over people, maybe it'll actually be people for people, you know what I mean? And then, nope, you wake up and the headlines are, um, Florida man tries to kidnap a four-year-old boy inside the Lee County Walmart, Le Lehigh Acres. Lehigh Acres, yeah, you guys can see here. Can y'all see that? It's really hard to see. I know there's a glare every single time. But this man is walking through Walmart and sees a little boy there and just reaches out and grabs his hand and tries to yank him along behind him. And thankfully, another female saw it and grabbed the kid and pulled back. And according to what I saw on the news, it wasn't even the kid's mom. It was a, I don't know if it was a friend or another family member or whatever, but was able to grab the little boy and pull him back. But how brazen do you have to be to think you can walk through a store filled with people and cameras? We know exactly how many cameras are in Walmart. A ton, a buttload, a bazillion. I don't have an actual number, but y'all know exactly what I'm saying. There are a ton of cameras inside Walmarts. Um, and this man, obviously, I don't even want to say mentally ill because I'm tired of everybody blaming mental illness on evil people. This is an evil man who thought he was going to get away with taking a child away from their parents, from their family, out of a store with nobody noticing. He's a stupid evil man is what he is. And thankfully he got caught. The, the woman who was there that pulled the boy back saved him. And then authorities arrested this man. And I don't know if they were able to arrest him because of their surveillance cameras in Walmart. They were able to do like a facial recognition. <laughs> you know, yeah, the irony here. When you and I, I know for a fact, would much rather have our privacy and not have a bazillion or a bajillion, whichever one is bigger, go with that word, cameras uh, aimed at us from above, from the side up. Who knows? Walmart could have them little jokers shooting up through the floors. A lot of the stores redid their floors. Maybe it's because they have cameras that, you know what? Ladies never wear a skirt to Walmart again. That's it. Just a random thought there. That hit. Okay. Anyway, uh, I don't know if the cameras are what were able to help authorities get this man because, again, facial recognition, it is a thing. This is one of those times where you want to say yay for the cameras everywhere, yay for facial recognition because it took a bad, evil man off the streets. But at the same time, it's like, you, you know, it's a really hard line to walk because... You like the fact that it can keep people safe, but you dislike the fact, and by you, I mean me and uh, tons of other people, dislike the fact that it invades your privacy at every single step of the way. Heaven forbid, you just want to walk down an aisle and pick your nose or pick your butt because you got a wedgie and you don't want people to see you. Well, people sitting in Walmart or Target or Kroger or Publix or whatever store, they're watching you on camera, pick your nose and dig in your butt. So keep that part in mind too. They're, they're watching everything. The, the problem here is it's going to get worse. I don't want to say it's going to get worse on attempted kidnappings because I hope like crazy that is not the case, but it's going to get worse in the sense of cameras everywhere. I watched a video on YouTube and I don't remember what channel it was. It was a blonde woman and I swear her backpack said CNET on it. I could be completely wrong. She went to this thing in New York City like 11 months ago. Um, the something... Y'all, I, I literally cannot remember what I, what it was called. NFS 2023, 2024? NFS? No, that's not it. I don't know what it's called. Either way, it was a convention in New York City uh, for retailers and safety measures. Basically, cameras and, and palm scans and n new ways to keep you and I, John Q. Public, from getting to things and from being able to steal things and walk away with things. And she showed the Amazon go kind of store where you just walk in and pick what you want up off the shelf and walk out and it bills you. She showed this other one where Walmart, I'm pretty sure we'll be implementing this one soon, where you go to the self checkout register and instead of you take the one thing and you scan it and you know, it can pop up a picture and tell you exactly what it is. It, you just dump all of your stuff right there on the little, it's not a conveyor belt, the little 
whatever that is in front of the screen. Y'all, really? I've had two teas today, no coffee. Brain still is like, ah, we're on hiatus. We'll, we'll kick back in on January 3rd, hopefully. Um, she just dumped everything from this basket on to the counter. That's still not the right word, whatever. So she dumps it all on there and it can be willy nilly. Like some things can be facing up, some can be facing down. They can be in whatever angle you throw them on there. And the cameras, because there are so many cameras all around this thing, it's like honed in on the counter, which is still the wrong word. And it picked up everything. It shows a picture. It shows whatever else because AI, y'all, AI is so flippin' smart that it can tell based off the color and the placement of things and the shape of things exactly what it is. It doesn't need to see the barcode. It can read the words if the words are there, but it doesn't need the words. It's based off of the weight of something and the shape of it and the colors of it because AI knows, just like you would know, if you looked at a bag with no words on it, you would know which ones were peanut M&Ms versus which ones were Reese's Pieces based off of the color, the yellow bag versus the orange bag, right? You would know which one was a Snickers bar versus an Almond Joy. Again, based off the size, the shape, the color of the packaging, you would know exactly what it was. No words needed, no barcode needed. And that's where AI is moving to. She showed this thing where she tried to put a pack of gum underneath an entire pack of diapers. She used the, the um, QR, no, nope, um, the barcode, hello, the barcode of the gum. She put it underneath the barcode of the diapers and scanned it, hoping to skip scan-ish or trick the scanner so that it would bring her up for a pack of gum, not the entire thing of diapers. Here's the thing. It scanned, it rang up the gum, but then the picture uh, shows that she had diapers there. So it's getting whatever you're scanning here, but the camera is showing you from the top down exactly what it was. And when the two things did not align, when she went to go pay, because this is a testing kind of thing, went to go pay, it said, please wait for an attendant. Would not let her pay because AI and the self-checkout areas and all of these new um, what are the right words? Cameras and, um, uh, algorithms. That's not right. Um, uh, computer. Y'all, what the crap with my brain today? Trust me, just as annoying for me as it is for you. Softwares, all these different new software. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's made it so that it's almost impossible to get by with anything, to steal anything, because it will immediately alert an attendant. So you're going to have a really hard time stealing something. You're going to have an even harder time explaining to um, the police and your lawyer exactly what you were doing, because you didn't accidentally try to scan, you know, gum instead of your diapers. You knew exactly what you were doing, boo-boo, because they will have cameras that watch you pick up the diapers, pick up the gum, and go, ha <laughs> this and try to scan. You're not going to be able to get away with anything, which in theory is great, right? It should hopefully keep the cost of everything down. Hopefully there will be less theft. Therefore, there will be less um, money lost passed on to us in forms of new price increases and whatever else. The fingers crossed on that, right? But at the same time, it's still such an invasion of privacy. What if you have your cell phone open, you're having a conversation with your husband, your wife, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your auntie, your uncle, whatever, and you're having this conversation or somebody sending you a picture, hey, keeping it frisky, risky, you know what I'm saying with, with your significant other, and you're opening it up and you're like, oh, there's nobody around me. I'm going to look at this. Ma'am, there's 75 cameras above you now. Everybody in loss prevention office or wherever else is sitting there looking at your boo-boo's junk the same as you are because they, they can see it on the camera. There will be no privacy left. There's no privacy on your cell phone. There's no privacy on your computer. There's no privacy in your home. If you have Alexa or Siri, anything, they are always listening. They are always watching. Cameras are everywhere. You have cameras at intersections. You have cameras on people's front doors. You have cameras on, bu on businesses. You have cameras in your car. You have your forward camera, your reverse camera. You have dash cams. This entire country, I don't want to say the world because I don't know if every country does this kind of thing. I don't know what's happening in Cambodia or over in Taiwan or if, you know, Egypt does the same thing, South Africa. I have no clue what all the other countries are doing when it comes to the amount of cameras they have aimed at their citizens. But here in the good old United States of America, they have a lot of cameras, okay? And they can see every single thing you do. Your brain may be telling you, I'm going to get away with this. Let me tell you something that happened. 
I saw a story of somewhere where people woke up in the morning. This was a couple, I think this was on the 31st, actually. People woke up in the morning, went out to their driveways, and their cars had been vandalized. People, somebody had taken a key and, you know, drawn really gross things on people's vehicles, written really atrocious words, broken windows and everything else. And so it was a, the police come out and they say, hey, we would like everybody who has a ring camera or any kind of dash cam or any kind of anything to go through all of your surveillance stuff and give it to the police officers so we can piece it all together and pinpoint who did this to these cars and make an arrest based off of your cameras, their camera, whatever else. And again, that's one of those things where you're like, well, that's a, that's a good thing. We're helping somebody. But at the same time, you're still technically invading privacy or the police are invading privacy or somebody's invading privacy by wanting all the, the videos. But either way, there is such a, it is such a double-edged sword with how many cameras we have, how much invasion of privacy we have. But I know even for my, myself, if heaven forbid something were to happen and somebody's camera on their car, their dash cam, or on their, their home, their, what, their ring camera, or even in a store, whatever store it happens to be, I would be thankful that that video surveillance, whatever was there, if it meant, you know, saving me, saving my kid, exonerating one of us for something, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's such a double-edged sword. But what I wanted to say, the whole reason I started talking about this, this child who was, you know, grabbed by this, this deranged, evil, lunatic of a man, uh, nope, taking lunatic away, we're not going to throw mental illness in there because I'm tired of that being used for absolutely everything. Is it real? Do people have mental illness? Hell yeah. Especially after the last couple of years when everything has just been, huh, right? But I still think we have to understand that people are evil. There are evil people out there and we have to quit giving them an excuse to be evil by saying, oh, it's mental illness. They were sad over the last couple of years and they were lonely and blah, blah. No, evil. Anyway, what I was thinking about, I've seen kids on those little backpack leashes and stuff. And when I was younger, I would see it and I'd be like, mm -hmm, you're not a very good parent if you have to put your kid on a leash. Like, what is that, a little puppy? Now I'm like, good for you for putting that freaking kid on a leash because one, children run, okay? But two, try to grab a kid on a leash, on a little backpack leash. The second you tug, mom's gonna get tugged or dad or whoever else, ooh, that sounded wrong. They're gonna feel it on their wrist, wherever they're holding the kid, and it's gonna alert them and that could save the kid. Now, you're gonna have people out there that's a, that are going to say, well, if that parent or whoever had been paying attention, anybody who says that, I'm going to assume ha does not have a child because, y'all, y'all, children are wily. They turn and run faster than you can do anything. And as a parent trying to get groceries or whatever else, you cannot hold your child the entire time, not always, especially a toddler, kicking and screaming ones, but this kid's four years old. Anyway, the... I, I, I understand now why some parents are the way they are. And I also think that more parents need to be a little more hands-on and focused on their children. I've been to places too many times where kids are literally running wild and there's not a parent around. And my first thought always is anybody could grab this child and run out and the parents or whoever would not know until it was way too late and, you know, a missing child report had to be put out, Amber Alert or, or you know. And so hopefully, hopefully, and unfortunately and hopefully, it's a really weird combination here, but hopefully the fact that this happened the very first day of the year when people, like I said, are still optimistic that this might not be like a dumpster fire of a year, hopefully people seeing that reminds them you cannot keep your head in the clouds. You cannot just hope that everything's going to be okay. You have got to keep your head on a swivel. You've got to pay attention to your children. You've got to pay attention to what's happening around you and yourself, even if you don't have kids. And you have to pay attention to everybody else's kids. I don't give two shits if you don't agree with me. It takes a village to keep children safe. It takes a village to keep people safe. That's why we have armies. They are a village. I'm, and police officers and everything else. It takes a village to make sure that people are safe. If you happen to be out and you see some evil person reach for a child that you know is not theirs, I hope you say something. I hope you do something. Even if it's to just make a loud noise or throw something at somebody. Like anything that causes people to turn and look. I'm not saying go put yourself in harm's way or whatever else, but we got to be willing to do something because it does take a village to keep these children safe. It takes a village to keep each and every one of us safe. And I think if we 
focused more on each other and making sure we are all safe, then we would be much better off right now because we're letting way too many things tear us apart politically and environmentally and whatever else. If we focused on each other and making sure that the person next to you was okay, a, a hi, a smile, a how are you, a anything is helpful. You just never know how far that can go in somebody's life. I don't know how we got to where we are right now, but anyway, like from start to here, squirrel, y'all know how this works. I love y'all, squirrel tribe. Thank you for letting me just kind of word vomit rant because that's what I do sometimes. Um, but I, I saw that video of the man grabbing this child and pulling and everything in me was like, throw something at his head. Like, and then the lady grabbed the kid and pulled him back. That man, if I had been there, he would not have made it out the front door of that store. And he did. I saw the surveillance. He made it out the front door, which to me, I'm like, are you serious right now? I know people worry about their own safety because the police and Walmart and whoever else will be like, well, you know, you stepped in and it's not your job and you can't do that. Mm, citizen's arrest is a thing, people, just so you know. I will citizen arrest him by knocking him the f out so he cannot leave and so that the police can get him. So that's me. Y'all don't have to. You do you, boo. But that's me. So. That's all. <laughs> I love you guys immensely. I'm going to go inside and cook some dinner now. I got chicken legs to cook and some sweet potatoes and some French green beans or long green beans. I don't know what you're supposed to call them. Um, that's about it. You guys uh, think about liking the video if you want to. If not, it's fine. No harm, no foul. There is a link for Patreon in the description if you want to support the channel. Again, no harm, no foul if not. And I will see you again tomorrow. I hope you personally are having a fabulous beginning to this year. But keep, keep, keep it in mind. Keep your head on a swivel, okay? Don't let your guard down. Just make sure you stay safe, okay? Love you guys. Bye.